Hi everyone there at GNU Radio Conference. Uh, my name's Hayden Nelson. I'm the Edis Research Marketing Manager, and today I'm joined here uh, by Abe Samant. Uh, he's our Chief Software Engineer for our Aerospace and Defense uh, Business Unit in our Systems R&D team. It's quite a long title you got there, um, but uh, we, we, um, sure, we pre-recorded this for the, the conference here at GNU Radio. I will be there in person. Abe, uh, sadly, will not be there in person. Um, we're excited to be here again and again be the Diamond Sponsor. And so today, uh, we want to share with you a, um, a, some new capabilities for communications, radar, and EW, um, and an SDR-based uh, research platform we've been working on. So uh, with that, let's, uh, let's, let's get started. So the title of our top uh, new capabilities for comms, radar, and EW with an SDR-based research platform, a lot of words. Um, and so really, we're going to break it down into two sections here today. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the investments we've been making in communications you know, research technology, namely we're, you know, the universal software radio peripheral or the USRP is a key to that. And um, at, at NI and Edis Research, we talked to a lot of people in the, in the wireless world and we've kind of spoke to leaders in, in, the, in aerospace and defense, commercial, uh, commercial wireless, people doing automotive radars in the transportation industries. We hear the stories of people, you know, employing wireless technology for a number of different applications, communication being one of them, sensing for autonomous driving, uh, military radar, commercial radar, and, and the evolution of the wireless world is really transforming a lot of things for us in terms of the way that we use, use this technology. And, and across all those different applications, we've seen a lot of commonalities. People are increasingly wanting these things to be really adapted, these technologies to be adaptive, to be able to um, rapidly transition them to new capabilities and to be customized for their specific application. And that lends itself to software-defined radio or software-defined technologies is gonna be a critical piece of this. So us in the software-defined radio world um, have a huge advantage here that we ha or we've all been very enthusiastic about this technology for many, many years, and it's becoming increasingly more important as a, a, a base technology to enable all these future applications. Within all those applications, there's a lot of diversity in terms of waveform types. Some commonalities exist from radar, EW, communications, and we see people needing higher frequency, wider bandwidths, and multi-channel. I remember sitting at Junior Radio Conference 2018 when we were, um, we, we actually had our sponsor presentation there in Las Vegas, and we were quizzing the audience. It was kind of funny. We, um, we had people, we said, hey, who here needs higher frequency? And then a bunch of hands would come up. And then we'd have, who needs wider bandwidth? And a whole bunch of hands would come up. And we were sitting there in that, you know, big conference room in, in Vegas. And we've taken some of that feedback from the, the open source and software defined radio community that we've learned over the years and, and, uh, and employed it into our product technology to be able to meet these requirements to, to go forward. And when we look at, you know, 5G, there's a lot of applications that, that are going to take advantage of 5G. And 5G has a lot of new technology built into it with uh, massive MIMO, low latency modes, and that's going to enable a lot of really cool applications. I can't wait for the day where I get my Amazon drone to you know, deliver my uh, USRP B200 mini to my front door. And, but that really comes down to wireless cognition, uh, wireless sensing, immersive XR. There will be a, a lot of these applications that we you know, we'll see in the in the future based on this wireless technology. And now as 5G comes to bear, there's we're looking at what vectors are we going to need to innovate um, for 6G technology and communications. And that's really going to come down to, uh, you know, of course, more throughput. That's everyone, you know, needs more throughput. But things like ultra reliability, you know, when we're talking about autonomous vehicles and these things that are safety critical, uh, reliability becomes key because, you know, no, nobody wants their autonomous car to, you know, to crash. And, and, and that's really going to mean a lot of innovation on um, certain technologies like um, extreme MIMO, joint communication and sensing. And we've seen that in both the commercial space and the, and the aerospace and defense um, arenas. And so, and when we look at the, uh, the requirements for some of the enabling technologies that could drive 6G is really evolving the, the capabilities of MIMO, sub terahertz, uh, joint communication and sensing, machine learning and artificial intelligence. All these technologies are going to be driving factors to make what 6G will become. And so we've looked at all these different things and said, all right, what do we need to bring to the engineer out there to be able to prove this technology today? And so that is, um, some of you have may, have may have already seen this latest 
USRP in our product line was really specifically designed to meet some of these challenges and requirements in the market. And, and here it is stacked up against the rest of the Edis Research USRP portfolio, which many of you in the audience uh, know and love and, and are, are heavy users of. And the, the USRP X410 is the latest incarnation of the um, USRP or Universal Software Radio Peripheral. Um, so you can see here on the right that it's, it meets or exceeds the performance standards on almost all the metrics here, frequency, bandwidth, number of channels. So it's a suffice it to say we went very high end on this product, and it is an evolution of the X series, the high performance series of USRP. It's a new platform that we intend to innovate on going into the future. And so, it, you know, I already talked about the RF capabilities inside the digital capabilities of this radio. We're also designed to meet those future requirements um, of you know, defense and communications applications. It's built on the state-of-the-art uh, Xilinx Ultrascale Plus RF SoC. Now, this is a really cool chip that has a, a lot of technology built inside of it. And it's, you know, you, you can kind of see, see here some of those specifications. What's inside this chip is, to me, is really cool because it's more than just an FPGA. It's, it has A to D's DAX, highly integrated um, uh, device with embedded processors as four application processing units, uh, two real-time processing units, large streaming DSP fabric. It has eight multi-gigabit transceivers for high-speed digital interfacing. So it's not only the RF and analog, but once you get that data, how do you get it off to be able to apply your machine learning algorithms on that data in a real-time fashion, maybe in a, in a GPU? So it has not only high-speed analog interfaces, but very high-speed digital interfaces, as well as a whole lot of inline signal processing and a number of other features built into the radio. So suffice to say, it's a pretty uh, pretty high-tech radio. And, and of course, it's software-defined radio. It wouldn't be um, you know, SDR if it didn't support a whole lot of software. Of course, GNU radio is, uh, is critical. Open source is, is very important to us. And you'll notice that the, the, uh, the name of it is a little weird. For, for those in the, in the community, the NI Edis USRP X410, because traditionally we've had National Instruments radios or NI radios, as well as Edis Research radios. And that people mostly said, oh, Edis Research radios, those are, those are only for open source users. Well, well no, not, and, and, then, and then we'd have NI radios and those worked on LabVIEW and, and other tools. Well, this radio is intended to be the best of both worlds of the Edis Research um, radios as well as the NI USRPs that it can support all the tool chains in a single radio. It incorporates uh, embedded processors like our N series as well as high performance um, FPGA like our X series. So it's really the culmination of all the innovation over the many years of Edis research culminate into this really high performance radio. So that's why we said we didn't want to communicate to people this is an NI radio or an Edis research radio. It's an NI Edis radio because it does you know pretty much everything the best of many of these radios that many that folks in the community know and love. So I just wanted to, to, to highlight that. And, it, and, you know, I'm an FPGA guy and it has the most FPGA resources of any um, NI product, even some of our PXI Flex Rio FPGA based ultra scale plus. So we looked at those requirements and said, hey, there's going to be a lot of need for high, uh, high performance streaming. And we don't want the FPGA to be a limiting factor. And so this um, RFSOC has a lot more FPGA resources on it, suffice to say. So here's the front of the, the radio. It's pretty cool. Come by um, and, and take a look. You'll note one striking omission here that, that if I was in the audience here, I would poll the audience and see if you could identify it. You'll, you'll notice there's no local oscillator imports and exports on this radio, which is you know important for people wanting to do phase aligned multi-channel synchronization. And this radio is, is, we decided to not include that feature on this particular radio, ultimately to keep the uh, the cost at a reasonable level that, that for the applications of which we think people are going to use this. So I just wanted to highlight that. You can do some level of phase alignment here with some digital controls of the VCOs and local oscillators internally, uh, but there is no local oscillator import and export. But it does have four channels in and four channels out. And you can take a look on the back. It does have timing alignment heart, um, capability with a you know one PPS and a 10 megahertz clock. So you can do you know, time aligned operation with this radio using GPS, a GPS DO on board. And it also has, as you can see here, we have the PCI Express Gen 3 by 8 and two QSFP 28s for dual 10 gigabit Ethernet off the back. And then just some, you know, command and control interfaces, as you would expect. So that's the, that's the USRP X410. It's already out there. We released it a couple months ago, mid uh, 2021. Pretty excited about it. 
There's people already putting it to use using open air interface for 5G test beds. I, I'm aware of several research institutes that have, have gotten that working. One of our early uh, customers of it was a, a company called 3DB Labs. They've done a lot of great work and they have um, some advanced signals intelligence software. And you, you'll see here a little picture. They actually came to Austin and did a demonstration in studio. And I was really impressed with their Scepter software for signals intelligence. It's kind of the Swiss Army knife of spectral awareness and is where and with the X410, it's even more capable because they have a lot more channels and a lot more, um, you know, a lot wider bandwidth. Um, and of course, it's GNU Radio Ready. Uh, GNU Radio is an amazing um, open source community based uh, software tool that that we are heavy supporters of, as well as RF Knock, which many of you know know and love. So go to ni.com slash sdr or edis.com. We'll be here at GNU Radio Conference. You know, come by our booth. We'll have one of these in the booth, um, or you can go to our virtual booth to see some of the demonstrations. With that, um, I'm going to transition to the uh, next segment of our presentation, and we're going to talk about radar and EW research platforms for SDR. So NI has a, a strong history of uh, multi-channel systems. You can see a couple examples of them here on the right. The top is a massive MIMO system we put together to prove um, you know, massive MIMO would be a viable technology for 5G. They broke a spectral record with this system, synchronized multi-channel system. The bottom, this was a, a system uh, done with DARPA for a mass channel, channel emulator for proving that machine learning and AI is a viable technology for spectral cognition. Um, and so we have a pretty strong um, history of building these systems and we're continuing with that. And, uh, and I've, uh, Abay Samant here is gonna share with you some investments in system level offerings we've been putting together for multi-channel system radar EW research platforms for SDR. Thank you, Abay, for coming. The radar and EW research platform reference architecture contains various components uh, that NI has put together uh, in order to enable uh, researchers such as yourself working in the radar and electronic warfare space who are who want to simulate different types of algorithms, create different types of algorithms. But once they have those algorithms are proven out on a simulation platform, we also want to try running those algorithms on real world hardware with real world signals. One of the challenges that we have learned talking to many customers is while the development of the algorithms is difficult by itself, getting the infrastructure right uh, to implement those algorithms on a hardware platform makes the problem even a little bit more challenging. So while you as customers are definitely the domain experts in radar and EW, National Instruments, we are trying to make it easier for you with the infrastructure piece. And that's kind of the underlying reason why we decided to embark on this journey to build this reference architecture. This reference architecture has the following key features. First of all, we have detailed documentation that describes how you can put such a test bed together, especially when you're trying to do multi-channel synchronization and streaming of data from all these channels onto a powerful server. We have implemented different software elements uh, in a modular fashion so that you can put together these kinds of systems. And in addition to providing the documentation on how to implement the system, we have instantiated one system itself, which is the 32 channel, multi-channel, 32 channel space synchronous system that is shown in this slide over here. This system, the 32 channel system has a powerful server. Uh, we have two, we recommend two uh, instances of server. One is a AMD based um, a server and other is a server based on a latest chip from Intel. We also provide you the network and the system topology on how you share the uh, multiple uh, local oscillator signals together uh, in a way to the extent of also providing the cable lens so that you have no del phase delta between the multiple channels. And also we talk about how do you do the system calibration so that you can minimize any of the drift that you see when your experiments are running for a longer period of time. In addition to the hardware elements, we have also focused on the software components of it. So yes, we have the benchmark rate example in the UHD driver, which is a good starting point, but we have taken it to the next step higher where we have optimized the multi, the benchmark rate example 
by adding things such as streaming engines, by looking for the optimal way to write those programs so that you can get high data rate streaming from these large number of channels uh, into a powerful server. The open source software is built in C++ and it will be available on the ETIS uh, GitHub page. For the 32 channel system that we have put together in the lab, we also provide the system specifications for how the phase difference between the multiple channel is repeatable from run to run, uh, from run to run with a session reset, and also as we change configurations such as power level and frequency level. In addition to that, the reference architecture also provides streaming, streaming specification numbers as to the amount of data that can be streamed from these multiple channels. Now, one of the things that we have focused on a lot is what we have seen is you get certain data rates as you are looking at one or two channels, but as you scale from one channel to 32 channels, often we see that the data rates drop down. The reference architecture has special uh, features in it to ensure that the data rate stays consistent uh, as the number of channels scale. Uh, all of the reference architecture will be supported using the standard NI technical consulting services. Uh, and we also have documentation in how once this data is streamed to the server, how you can integrate it with MATLAB or with GPU libraries. So why, why, why are we doing all these things? Well, we're doing all these things so that once you have your, say, machine learning and AI algorithm implemented, you can then quickly take all this data from real world environments and then see how your machine learning algorithms uh, uh, perform in those scenarios. So let, let's, let me demonstrate that with an example. Say you're writing one of the new reinforcement learning algorithms. And um, uh, for those of you who are new to this topic, in reinforcement learning, the idea is that rather than relying on pre-acquired uh, supervised or unsupervised uh, or labeled or unlabeled data, you are essentially sensing the environment in real time, acquiring that signal, and then making decisions on how your algorithms need to evolve so that you can make better decisions, whether it could be for spectral cognition or better usage of the spectrum. Well, in that case, a reference architecture like what we have put together will require you to have multiple of these sensors all synchronized together so that there is no timing difference introduced, timing or phase difference introduced from the test bed itself. And then you can focus purely on the algorithm that you are developing. So that is one of the applications that can be enabled by this reference architecture that we have put together. The whole idea, once again, is that you're focused on improvising and improving your algorithms by leaving the hard work of setting up the test bed infrastructure over to us at National Institute. So let's zoom in a little bit more on the reference architecture. Uh, we looked at a portfolio of USRPs that are available from the NI, NI ETIS research grant. And the one that from that portfolio we choose to focus on is the N320, N321. Uh, here are some of the key specs of uh, that radio. One of the main reasons why we chose this ETIS radio uh, is because of the LO sharing capabilities that it, that it has. So uh, on a single unit, you have the capability to synchronize the local oscillators or use a common local oscillator uh, for all the radios that are on these, on these devices. And that is why in this reference architecture for the multi-channel application, we recommend uh, you using the N320, N321, and that's what we have used as well. Uh, here is a picture of how you do the local oscillator distribution uh, within the N321. Uh, it essentially can take, yeah, there are two flavors of the N32X series. It is the N320 and the N321. And you can use one of them in as a main uh, radio that you have. Uh, and then other ones can be the child radios of that, which are inheriting the, the distribution. We have a splitter recommended in the reference architecture that shows you how to take the signal from one device and then split it and spread and share it uh, among the multiple devices. The splitter that we have recommended is what we have used in our system configuration as well in the system that we have instantiated as well. 
so that when we look at the numbers that we get for a phase drift uh, over a period of time or from run to run, the any of the differences that are coming from the splitter are calibrated out as well. So when you're using the reference architecture, while you have the freedom of replacing different components, uh, our recommendation would be to use the system components that we are recommending so that you can quickly reproduce the type of system specifications that we are seeing. But the type of numbers that we are seeing, for example, we can we can get over a 24-hour run. Uh, we are seeing phase difference drift of less than a degree uh, across the multiple channels. Let's look at the software architecture of the reference architecture. It's built on the UHD driver. Um, the operating system that is built on is Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, we have tested both with UHD 4.0 release and also the 4.1 release. Uh, on top of that, we are using third-party network interface drivers. We have tested the reference architecture with the Intel X710 and the E810 network interface cards and also with the Mellanox networks interface cards. And then the reference examples that we are providing built on top of that. When you see the reference architect examples that we ship, you'll notice that we have built it in a modular fashion so that you can run the example as it is in a monolithic form, or you can take pieces of these examples and then build your own application as well. The second thing we also done in all the reference examples is that we have provided a configuration script so that automation of some of these examples becomes easier rather than you having to manually type in all of these long commands. And trust me, it is one thing to type in manually for one radio, but when you're trying to control 16 different radios, you don't want to be manually typing in this. So the configuration files makes that process much more error-free and also more uh, prune or more uh, productive for automation. In addition to the, to the software, the reference architecture also contains interconnect diagrams, a wired list that you can hand over to, a, uh, to your technician who can put these systems together and also contains assembly instructions for how to assemble the system. Uh, in terms of hardware, uh, I've already spoken about the LO sharing. We also share the clock and the reference signals. And that is also demonstrated as part of the reference architecture as to what is the optimal uh, location for these octoclocks and what are the cables that you should be connecting between these different octoclocks. The system instantiation that we have done is set up in a loopback fashion where we use the generator on the USRP for generating the signal and then loop it back and do the analysis on that. Finally, I would like to talk to you about uh, the actual topology that we have both for the data movement and for the synchronization. On the left-hand side, uh, we, you see how we have set up the data movement between the CPUs uh, and the different um, uh, other processing cards that we have in the server, which are a combination of uh, uh, GPU cards from NVIDIA uh, and also some FPGA cards. And so the data is shared over this network. And then we have further optimized the code so that we can get high streaming data rates from all of the channels over to a central location in the server. Once the data comes to the server, we have created some examples uh, using uh, the MathWorks uh, tools so that we can see how the MathWorks libraries can then work on this data that is stored into onto the memory and then do further radar processing on it. We also demonstrate in the reference architecture how the data can be stored on a disk so that it can be used for post-processing as well. On the synchronization, the way we have described the reference architecture, we can start with a 32-channel system, but if your application requires an 8-channel system or a 16-channel system, you can remove some pieces of the reference architecture and then have it scaled down to eight or 16 channels or scaled up to 64 or 128 channels as well. So the overall goal between the software, hardware, the network topology and the system interconnect diagram is that you can quickly set up the system and reproduce the specification for synchronization and streaming that we're seeing in the labs and focus more on the algorithms that you're trying to build. 
Thank you for your attention. All right, well, <laughs> thank you for that overview of the, the system of A. And actually, um, we have one of our systems R&D engineers over in the lab, and he's gonna give us a quick tour of, a, of a, the, the actual system that we're working with over in the lab. Let's uh, take it over to Jovian Waisaki. Hi, I'm Jovian Waisaki, systems R&D engineer for NI's Aerospace and Defense Business Unit. Today, I'd like to briefly walk through an instance of our RF multi-channel research testbed. This instance of our reference architecture is built on the USRP hardware driver using USRP N321s and N320s. This system here is a 32 channel system uh, composed of 16 USRPs. It's a combination of N320s and N321s all hooked up to 10 gig connections. It's more than just putting radios in a rack. You know, we've specified the topology of, for LO and clock distribution. You can see here, we have a lot of wires. It can get kind of messy. Uh, these wires are for the LO. Uh, it goes to all 32 channels coherently. We've done the hard work, and we want to share what we've learned building this system with y'all. Now, multi-channel synchronization is more than you know LO distribution. We are also distributing the 10 megahertz uh, and PPS to each radio through the octoclocks in the back. Uh, our system documentation specifies uh, all of the hardware requirements for you to duplicate this same system, along with some critical assembly suggestions for cable management and you know, location of the USRPs. Uh, the hardware is just the first piece. We've also built considerable software infrastructure to simplify the process of getting started. Now, everything is running off of the Ubuntu 20.04 installation. All the code will be openly available on the NS GitHub. You know, we have, uh, we've included several examples to uh, show you how to achieve the same multi-channel performance that we have. We've designed the code to be modular and ready to incorporate your algorithms without having to build all the infrastructure of such a complex system. The code is built around configuration files. And these configuration files input the parameters for each, you know, each parameter. The power level, the uh, number of samples, the sampling rate, etc. As we uh, currently finalize you know, the first revision of this reference arch architecture, we have plans to deliver more capable and future enhancements to now, let's hand it back to Abe to share some of these system performance numbers uh, we were able to achieve. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> All right, thank you, uh, Jovi, and over there, a little uh, editing magic there to go to and from the lab super uh, super quickly. But we appreciate the uh, the quick tour through the system. It's um, a uh, it's it's pretty pretty neat to see that whole thing uh, put together. So Jovi had mentioned um, that that y'all have done you know, a, a significant amount of characterization of that system on the, the multiple channels. What can you say of like where y'all are at in that process and, and what are those numbers looking like? That's a good question. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but the numbers that we're seeing today are very encouraging. Let me give you an example. Across 32 channels, when I measure the phase diff drift mm -hmm. um, over say 24 hour period, we're seeing phase difference of less than one degree mm -hmm. over that time frame. Also, when I look at the phase offset between the 32 channels, that also is less than a couple of degrees. Mm. And the neat part is, as we go from run to run or from device reset to device reset, mm -hmm. we're able to keep that consistently. So there's mm -hmm. good repeatability that's also we are seeing, which is ex extremely important for our customers because they want to make sure that the algorithms are going to stay stable and mm -hmm. whatever they're seeing from the test system can be calibrated out. So we are excited both about the streaming and the synchronization numbers that we're seeing. And hopefully by the end of this month, we should have all the numbers ready to be published on uh, Edis website. Okay, yeah, that's, you know, I, I will say that we're pre-recording this. Um, I, well, one, I, I can recognize the challenge of, and, the, and the need for that phase stability. I've, I've seen a number of customers go through this. Nobody wants to recalibrate uh, phase calibration all the time from run to run. That's not fun for anyone. Um, and, and, you know, it kind of, you know, we're, we're pre-recording this uh, for GNU Radio Conference. I will be there in person as well as Jovi and Waisaki, and we should have some more performance numbers. If you want to come by the booth and talk to us, we, we're happy to share some of those. And, and like you said, I 
as we finalize the development of the system, we will be publishing not only the code and all the um, reference architecture documentation on GitHub, um, we're also going to be putting some of those system level performance numbers on kb.edis.com. You know, well, so so I don't know. That's pretty cool. I mean, I guess tying it all back together is that we you know we've we've, we've talked about uh, communications, radar, e and EW. We've um, shown you the the new technologies we've developed um, with the NI Edis USRP X410 that's really targeted at those next generation communication systems, and we're pretty excited about that radio and what you, the software defined radio communication or community, excuse me, um, are going to do with that cool new technology, um, as well as how people are going to take these system level um, offerings that we're putting together to, you know, kind of innovate what's next. And so um, with that, we appreciate your time and, and please come by our, our booth or come by our virtual booth at the show. I, like I said, I'll be there in person, <clears throat> excited to actually go somewhere other than um, the, well, I'm actually in the office today, other than my kitchen. Uh, during this this pandemic and, and get out there and re-engage with the with the community. And we're excited to again be a Diamond sponsor here at Guinea Radio Conference and continue our support for this uh, amazing community. Anyway, thank you for your attention and see you later at the event.